lockdowns, China is seeing a record number of new COVID cases since the start of the pandemic. Authorities this week reported more than 30,000 cases a day. And as families gather together this holiday weekend, health officials fear a triple-demic of flu, COVID-19, and RSV. The Department of Health and Human Services says more than three-quarters of hospital beds nationwide are full. Experts worry that holiday travel and large family gatherings could worsen the spread and push those hospitals to the brink. So, joining us now is Dr. Ashina Bissett McCain. She is an emergency medical physician and assistant professor at Baylor College of Medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. First, I, I want to touch on the caseloads at hospitals where you are and hospitals across the country. What are you seeing right now? Well, luckily for us, COVID cases across the United States have remained relatively stable for the last few months. We're not yet seeing signs of the winter surge that we experienced over the last two years, but I cannot say the same as it relates to RSV and the flu. We are seeing unprecedented numbers of RSV at this time of year, but not only are the cases higher than we're used to seeing, the rate of rise is also a lot quicker than we are used to. The positive news there is that in many places across the country, Texas being one of them, RSV does seem to be on a bit of a downtrend. Here we had a 26% positivity rate for RSV in October, and at the end of last week that was down to 15%, so headed in the right direction. Not quite the same for the flu, however. We haven't seen flu numbers like we're experiencing currently since probably the 2009 H1N1 pandemic. And not only are flu cases high, they're staying high and they're continuing to rise. Pandemic, not a word that anyone wants to hear right now. So but why is all of this happening? Why these three viruses at this level right now? What exactly has led to this situation? You know, there are so many things that I could touch on and so many reasons. This is really multifactorial. I hear a lot of talk about the immune debt and immunity gap, and I don't think that that fully explains what's going on. I've said this before that I think that's more of a societal term than a truly scientific one. What we're not talking about enough are the potential impacts that COVID-19 infection can have on one's immune system and how it can negatively impact your immune system. Not only making it more susceptible for you to contract viruses, but making those viruses more virulent and more dangerous once you do contract them. Right now, infants under the age of six months are being hospitalized at seven times the rate with RSV than they were pre-pandemic. That can't be explained by an immune gap. What can explain it is the fact that studies have shown that pregnant mothers who are infected with COVID de deliver infants who have higher levels of inflammatory markers that have been shown to impact their health long term. Or the fact that other studies have shown mothers who contract COVID while pregnant deliver infants who have lower lung volumes than others. So there are a lot of things at play here. That's really interesting. Can you just talk about the ways that these three viruses spread as people go from these big holiday gatherings back to their workplace, back home? They don't all transmit the same, correct? The flu, RSV, and COVID? Correct. For the most part, these are respiratory viruses, but viruses such as COVID spread via airborne particles, whereas with the flu, we're looking at respiratory droplets. Viruses can also live on surfaces, not just your hands, but surfaces like countertops and doorknobs. COVID for the most part hasn't been shown to be able to be transmitted at a high rate by touching surfaces, but a virus like RSV can live on surfaces for up to six hours. All right, doctor, thank you so much. If the arming people with some of that information will help prevent some of the spread. Thank you again for joining us. Hopefully, thank you.